Bill Raftery, welcome to the Seth Davis Show. Very nice. Very so, impressed you got your own show. My own show. It took me a little uh, while, yeah. but uh, now it's legit. Now that I have you here, it's legit. Well, I'll put you over the top or cancel the series, <laughs> one of the two. It's always good to be with you, man. It's just, well, thank you're you. a fun guy to be around. You're a fun guy to talk to. In fact, if you recall, I know this is a huge moment for you, but my very first segment in the CBS studio was with you and Bonnie Bernstein. So you literally broke me in at the network level. So you could Sorry. have destroyed me and destroyed my confidence that day. And <laughs> yet you loosed me, me on the world. There were a lot of people upset I didn't. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, despite me, I think you did all right on your own. I appreciate it. You're the best man. And, and it's, it's even at your young age. Thank you um, for not bringing it up. Are, are, you, are you still get excited to call games? Do you get nervous before a game? Does it um, ever get old to you? I don't think it, I don't think nerves enters into it, but I, I I think it's excitement that stimulates whatever uh, juices you have going. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. No game is insignificant to a lot of people, and I was usually that insignificant game when I coached. <laughs> so it doesn't matter who's playing. It, it's a I think a big responsibility of all of ours uh, because it's a community, it's a university that uh, follows that particular team. And what I always found interesting too, and we've met a lot of guys, and some are nicer, some are more open, some are more relaxed. Uh, I found that no matter what you thought about either coach, it was always the 10 kids playing. So you didn't get into that personality nonsense either. I mean, you're not a super critical guy, but you do make you know pointed analysis from time to time. You ever been confronted by a coach who didn't like what you had to say? Oh yeah, I mean, early on we had a funny bit with Bayheim. Uh, Dave Gavitt was, uh, you know, we should have Dave negotiating world peace, to be honest <laughs> with you, and keep all those great characters and egos in check in the early days. But uh, we had a game in Philly, and, and we all ended up at some restaurant, and I end up at the bar before we ate. You know, not, not really, we didn't even have a drink. You know, Beheim doesn't drink to begin with, but I end up with Beheim alone which I wouldn't wish on too many people, you know, <laughs> in terms of an engaging evening. But uh, anyhow, Dave had set it up. He thought I was favoring John Thompson, because uh, they had Jimmy so, yeah, thought you were like favoring. some of the things, you know. And, and that, that was uh, maybe once or twice after that. But I think that happens when you begin and people realize, you know, there's different guys I've heard uh, uh, different coaches say, you know, I can't let him in the gym. He played for so-and-so. You know, it doesn't matter. And then once they get over the, and that's usually the first year or two of anybody who gets into the business. But I would also imagine, I've heard this, I'm sure you have as well, from former athletes, former coaches who just break in, to cross that line where you do have to be critical and maybe you do have to say things that someone who you might be really good friends with and respect as a coach and a fellow coach, but right. now you're not serving that guy, now you're serving the viewer. That's, that's not always an easy line to cross. Well, I think it's all in the way you say things. Uh, I think it's easy to be vindictive and harsh. Um, I think you gotta give options why a guy chose something. And uh, if the play doesn't work, doesn't mean it's the wrong option or the bad decision. But uh, I, I think I just do the game. I don't even worry about, uh, I'm not there to look for some cause or uh, get involved in somebody's you know thought process uh, so I, I think the older you get nobody really you just want to enjoy the game and I just hope I don't mess it up for them you know what's great about you Bill at this stage of your life and this stage of your career I mean we all the battle is to stay relevant. I don't care where you are in this business. It's being relevant and having a relevant voice. And not only have you managed to stay relevant, but you're still cool. I mean, you are still... Jeez, uh, I'm going to tell my wife about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep it between us. But, I mean, it's interesting to me to read, you know, these blogs and these reactions from young fans, college-age kids. I mean, you're like... I mean, to me, the closest analogy might be Al McGuire, but I would even, Ooh. I'd even throw a little Sinatra in you, you know? I mean, you're, you know, the, the older gentleman, we'll say, in the sport, but you're still cool to the young right. masses. I mean, do you have a sense of why you've been able to stay connected like that? Well, I don't have Sinatra's voice or, <laughs> or Al's charm, but thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, I just think what you do, uh, they enjoy, and, and I think if you can embrace, you know, the game, and 
it, it sort of resonates maybe in a young guy's mind, but uh, I don't know, we have kids, which certainly helps. We've got four that uh, are characters, as you well know. Uh -huh. uh, so no, I just, I've always enjoyed young people. And as a young guy, I was always around older people. So now it's like a lot of my friends have lost a step. You know, they just can't order like they used to or stay <laughs> up as late. So I got to, you know, switch ends here and go with the younger set. <laughs> the younger ones can stay up later. Right. So th there's a part of me that thinks it's a little bit unfortunate that people always go to your catchphrases because the actual substance of your analysis, and again, having worked with you in the studio at CBS, I remember you having a, a, a big book of, of notes, which I assume you still have. I mean, you were writing and working the, high, the whole time. I mean, you really prepare yeah. in depth for, for games. I think, everybody's, I think everybody's got their own way of doing things. And some people can look at a game in preparing for another game and keep everything in. And not that I was ever a good student, but I used to study by writing things down and having it stick. And I still have the that tool at, at my disposal. The big the spiral bed. notebook is what yeah, I remember. Like, well, yeah. yeah, well this thing, I just have a yellow pad. And okay. It's, it's crazy. People look at it and they think you're, you know, you're speaking another language. But for me it works. Uh, so I, I don't consider it work though. I just think it's obligation and enjoyment. And, and somehow, as you know, you know, going to a great academic school, you study for an exam and you get the guy, the teacher asks you this much. So I think that's what we try and do, know everything and, and try and make sure that it's measured and it's not uh, you know, shoved at people and it fits. So, uh, and you know, a lot of th nice things happen during the course of a game and there's a lot of personalities out there and the more often you do a team, you know those kids and their person, or the coach lets you know them a little bit. So all of that you try and convey into a broadcast. And well. Make your flight. <laughs> That's the most important. <laughs>